Hello, thank you for joining me. So this is our fifth video in our series in regard to putting an exploded assembly view into a drawing along with the bill of materials and the blooms. So right now we're in the middle of our bill of materials and trying to make some edits to our bill of materials. And let's kind of take a look at that. Oop. Seems to be kind of frozen in space here. Okay, there we go. So what I did is I went through and I changed all the part numbers I could. Some of the part numbers and some of the imported items from the SolidWorks uh, toolbox library. Uh, I can't really edit those. It doesn't really allow me to do it. And just to demonstrate that, if I were to double click on one of these uh, these uh, cells that I am able to manipulate, uh, parts that I created myself, I can keep the link. It, does, it gives me that dialog box. If I were to click on something like in regard to the flat washer here, uh, it's not going to let me do that. I can, however, make some edits to uh, you know to that part. I can open up that part and actually save it so a material and a description kind of comes with that. But uh, in regard to the part number, it's kind of a fixed part number. We're go just going to go ahead and uh, stick uh, with the description of that. So in regard to uh, the description of it, let's go ahead and open up that part and save it with the description. So we can save it uh, one of two ways. Or we can uh, apply that uh, just description of one of two ways. If we go to File, go down to Properties. And if we go to Custom Properties in regard to um, uh, the part, go to Description here, and then here we'll call it a flat washer. And um, just make sure you have it in capitals. And when you put in a um, oh, fault washer, what is that? Flat washer. And when you put in a value in here in regard to a text expression, you do want a description over here for your property name and it gives you a short list of about properties that are available with that part and the property type is going to be text or date or number or yes or no and uh, that's uh, kind of a, um, a formula value and then uh, the value of the text is going to be over here and then it's going to uh, evaluate what that text is going to look like over here so whatever is over here is going to be processed and then the evaluated value is going to be over here so we're going to go to OK on that and we're going to close that and if you go to update, you'll notice that uh, our assembly over here is kind of hashed. If we go to the rebuild, whatever changes we made in that part level is going to change over here and should change over here too. So let's do the same thing over here to the other flat washer. Let's open up that part. Go to file, go to properties, go to a specific file properties. That part number of properties is going to be description. Text is what it defaults to. And of course, we're just going to call that flat washer, just like we did with the other one. My fingers are too big for the keyboard. And okay, there we go, guy. was a struggle. We go to OK, close that guy. And if we go to rebuild, bang, it's there. So we have everything filled in. Let's add a column. But first, let's go ahead and uh, manipulate uh, some of the columns we already have. I like it when you have numbers like this, sequential numbers or numbers that uh, uh, or correspond to a quantity. I like to have those centered. That's good. Text, centered text, I don't really like that as much. And I'm also going to take these columns just because I'm going to add another column here in a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and condense that a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to read, too. So the part column, because that's left justified, that's okay. I like that. Description column, let's go ahead and make that left justified too. So all I have to do is click on the top of the column. It selects everything for that column and all the cells below that in that C cell section on top of the column. Let's make all that left justified. Yeah, I like that. That looks a lot better. So now we can see where the longest text is and maybe condense our cells just a little bit. It's really nice if you have the room to be able to get everything on one line so all the text is on one line. It may not be practical here because there's a lot of text in there and it's going to begin to run into our model, especially especially if we're going to add a, a different column, which we're going to do here in just a minute. But uh, I think it's appropriate to have the item number first and then the description second. So how do you do that? Well, you take that C column, move it over here to in front of B. Now C becomes B. Its description comes first and C comes second to part number. So it remains a sequence. Uh, the numbers are still the same. It's just that we switch those columns from description to part number. Before the part number, I'm going to go ahead and add material. So if I right click in that column, go to insert, column left, it gives me the ability to add something here. So I'm going to go to a custom property over here, and I'm going to go to material, and we're going to add material to it. So material is at uh, the top of our column heading. And uh, remember, uh, everything that we have control of, 
we want to have a we want to make capitals we want to make a, we want to capitalize it so we do have control over material at least name material so we're going to go ahead and capitalize that what we don't really have a whole lot of control over is how SolidWorks names its material library so those items that say plain carbon steel are going to be lowercase uppercase and lowercase but it's not going to be all uppercase it's not going to be all capitals so uh, not ideal but uh, we're going to go ahead and accept it for now so in regard to any of these we can go ahead and uh, type just like we could before and keep that link and put it in there or instead of just typing something in there why not use a property that might already be assigned to it so for our wheelbase ooh that's not spelled right let's go ahead and change that let's keep that link and get rid of that extra L that's rather unsightly thanks for catching that error okay so we got that let's go ahead and right click inside of this and uh, actually let's go to cancel let's open up the part as one way to do it open up wheelbase and uh, let's just see what the, what the property is and the material actually is uh, plain carbon steel so why is it not showing up well sometimes you have to go through and assign that material as a link outside of the document so remember we, we went to file went to properties and uh, the description of this uh, item is not here but the configuration description is so we're going to keep that but as far as a custom property let's go ahead and choose material now this allows the part to communicate outside of its realm here like the assemblies and drawings and maybe documents outside of SolarWorks to tell it uh, that uh, we have this stuff here and this is what it is and that stuff here is going to be material so we're going to go scroll down go to material and it's going to be text and the value of the, uh, the expression, instead of just typing in text, which we could do right now, we're actually going to put in material. So now it's going to grab that material and put it over here for our evaluated value, which says plain carbon steel. And then we're going to go to OK. We're going to close our part. We want to save it. And just like we did before, our assembly is going to be cross-hatched. We're going to go ahead and rebuild that. And yes, it filled that in for plain carbon steel. So let's go ahead and do that for these other ones. Uh, something that's uh, up here in here in our column 10 that looks like it's a little bit wider than it should be. I'm going to go ahead and shrink that up a little bit. You do have that capability too. Uh, let's right click in this. And uh, yes, you want to go ahead and open up the, the gauge wheel lug nuts. And see what our uh, property is here for material, which is plain carbon steel. So let's go ahead and uh, go to properties. And again, assign that material by going to material over here. Assign a material again as a um, as a value. It evaluates it over there. Go to OK. Close that out. Go to Yes. And I rebuild it. And we have it here. Now, some of these we're not going to be able to assign a material to. But we can open up that part, like the flat washer, in regard to those items that are uh, part of uh, the material library in the toolbox, in regard to what uh, SolidWorks has in there. Uh, we can assign a material, so it's not specified here, so let's go ahead and edit material and assign a value to it. And why we just call that plain carbon steel, just like some of the other elements. Go to apply and close. And uh, I think, let's just go ahead and make sure our properties are in here. And we're going to have to assign that material here too. So it's a little bit uh, lengthy in regard to what we need to do. But it does get the job done. Go to OK. Close that part out. Go to rebuild. Bang. It adds, out the, it adds that in there too. I'm going to make that column a little bit shorter. Oh, I can't do that because I have extra text over here. And that's okay, so I'm going to keep that the same uh, with it as it is. So, there's our bill of materials so far. Item number, description, material, part number, and quantity. I kind of like the way that looks. In the next film, we'll do just a few more edits, and then we're going to jump right into balloons and uh, get this thing concluded.